have to do one thing for the cooperating teacher and then one thing for your supervisor. Kind of combine it. Yes, you have a question? Um, should this have been completed as well last week? No. Uh, some of my interns emailed me about that. And last week I said, if you just send a quick note to your supervisor and just say, you know, here's how things went this week. But with two days, I don't think you probably were able to do any of these. You're probably not even really teaching yet. And even week two, which will actually be week one full week this week coming up, you might not be able to touch on all of these yet because the intern you're not you know, teaching as much yet at this point. So it should become easier and easier to touch all those boxes as the intern progresses and is teaching more. That was a good question. So the cooperating teacher folder, I just want to let you know what's in there. Oh yes, Emily. So when do you want us to start doing this? This Friday. Oh, okay. This Friday is the first time you'll meet with your teacher and, and, and submit that. And again, this Friday, you might not be able to, your teacher might not be able to comment on all of those because it's limited in the beginning. And I just want to show you, yes, no, that would be great, yes. So on your, or in your folders, I'm just going to tell you what's in there so you know where to find things. In the, on the front page, this is the cooperating teacher folder. On the right side, you'll see a chart. I, I don't know if Megan's are in the same order as mine, but they probably should be pretty similar. This is just a chart of when is due, what evaluations are due to the interns on what dates. The interns are really responsible for getting that back to us and it's part of their grade and their seminar. So this shouldn't be necessarily your responsibility. It should be the interns who are saying, I, you know, this is the form I need filled out for this date. You can always do it and I suggest that you do it earlier than the date that it's due so that they have a chance to kind of digest, reflect, and it's not rushed. And, handed to them as they're walking out the door. And then the next page, this is a resource that was shared with us from Charlotte Danielson's evaluation form. It's just little things that, uh, little bits of information from each of the domains. So it's just used as a resource for the cooperating teacher if they, it's been a while since um, they watched the video training and they're thinking, oh wait, this is what I'm supposed to be looking for in this area or this category. So it's just a resource for you. And then you'll see the formative and uh, summative evaluation forms. Elementary Ed will have a reading practicum evaluation in there too. Which I just want to very briefly touch on the reading practicum evaluation if there, because I know you're math science at Mabry, and then I have a science and a math. Um, intern at in middle schools so those students will have to find another classroom to work with that group on and again we'll work with you on suggestions of how to do that if you just, they just talk to their supervisor but it can be that teacher who fills out the reading evaluation whatever teacher they were working with so since you didn't see that and it was not in your classroom so whatever teacher well, they, they work with the no training. no not for the reading evaluation so um, the due dates, like I said, is in there, formative, summative evaluations, and then the, the interns have the weekly feedback form in theirs. And I think probably all of you did this already last week. It sounds like that a lot of you introduced them to their administrators. If you wouldn't mind, sometimes I have interns that at week four will say to me, I still don't know where this place is, or the teacher tells me, you know, that I can make copies, but I don't even know where the copy room is. And of course, you know, we encourage them to ask your teacher. But if, if you would just kind of give them a brief, if you hadn't had a chance yet, tour of the school as far as here's where you can, you know, use the restroom, here's where you can get a drink, here's where you can do these things. Um, it's best if you set expectations with the interns, like if you're not gonna be here, I really want you to contact me by this time, or I expect you to arrive at this time and leave at this time. The better you communicate your expectations, expectations, the easier it is for the intern because sometimes they don't know what the cooperating teacher expects. Their requirements as far as hours or whatever your teacher hours are at your school or the requirements that they need to be there, bless you. I'll often suggest to them if you're somebody who gets in really early, then they might want to get in really early so that they can you know, plan with you and talk with you and see what, what's, what they're doing with you, but that's not necessarily a requirement, just more of a suggestion. They are supposed to stay for faculty meetings and anything that you're required to do, such as open house or conference night, then they stay for those things. I would love and encourage them and invite, ask you to invite them to anything extra that you do if there's a, you know, some kind of parent night or if there's a football game that teachers go to or, you know, something that teachers often attend, then let them know about that and we usually encourage them to attend those things too. And the first week while they're observing you a lot, and I know they might be doing more obs observation type things right now, then we would love for them to be actively doing things while they're doing that. So working with the student or circulating or not just sitting and watching you. 
Um, if there's any, there are any problems, the sooner you tell your, their supervisor, the sooner you tell us, the better, because then we can start working with them on that and provide more support. Typically, Megan and I will come out one time to observe them, but we're we're flexible and willing and able to come out more often than that. And so are the supervisors. We just need to know if you want us out there because sometimes we get the feedback, you were out here too much and um, it's disruptive. So we don't want to step on anyone's toes, but we're always happy to come out whenever you want us to. The cooperating teachers, the interns just need to let us know um, that they need a little more help. Modeling, coaching, scaffolding them, or scaffolding are really helpful. The dress code, I think, that the interns are all pretty clear on what their expectations are, but they're supposed to be removing any piercings other than their ear piercings. Again, we don't know if they're doing that on days that we're not here unless someone tells us, so you either need to let them know or if you're not comfortable, let us know. Um, they should be dressing professionally, so we ask them not to wear jeans except for on Fridays if your school allows uh, jeans, and if they are wearing jeans on Friday, it should be with the school spirit t-shirt or the UT shirt or something that um, was the intent of the jean day to start with. They're not supposed to be wearing leggings, they're not supposed to wear flip-flops, we want them to dress the part of a teacher. So those things are important to us and we value them. Again, they usually do a good job when they know we're coming. So if there's something that you know you feel like doesn't look appropriate, then let them know because quite honestly, a lot of the interns don't realize sometimes that what they were wearing was not considered professional. And so they're just learning also, so it's helpful if you tell them that's probably not the most professional outfit to wear. You know, this is something and for the interns, if it's something you'd wear out on Friday or Saturday night, it's probably not what you want to be wearing in the classroom, would be my guess. <laughs> um, share any resources with them from, you know, ideas to CPOM, smart board ideas, anything that's, and, and if you go to a training and they can come and attend, we encourage them to go with you to the training. If they're not able to go to a training, because sometimes the district is paid for a certain amount of teachers and they're not allowed to go, then we understand and they can stay back. They do have to have a substitute in the classroom because they are not um, sub-trained. They have all been finger printed but they're not allowed to be in the classroom without a substitute. They're, if you need to leave the room obviously once you feel like they can handle that then you can you know leave the room if you need to go do something but you need to st remain on campus and they need to know where to locate you in case there was an emergency or a situation where they needed to get a hold of you quickly. So if you would avoid just kind of walking out and leaving and them having no idea where to find you if something were to happen that would be helpful. Um, be positive about the teaching profession because they are really positive about it and they're really excited about it and they've just invested a lot of time, money, effort into this. So um, I don't know that they necessarily need to hear all the bad parts that, you know, after 15 years that you start to see is wrong with the teaching profession um, because we don't want to lose that energy and that enthusiasm. So those sometimes are things that they don't really need to hear right now about, um, you know, the, the griping, so to speak. And sometimes it's not the cooperating teacher, it's the cooperating teacher's the teacher that teaches next door to the cooperating teachers, which they can learn from a non-example sometimes too, um, but maybe just reinforce that part. Um, I talked about all of, of those things there. Typically, as I think was mentioned by Kay, or, um, and maybe it was another, I, you might have mentioned, you mentioned the time management. Uh, what was your name again? Nicole. Nic Nicole? Yeah. Okay. So Nicole mentioned earlier, and, and I meant to put that on here, and I, I actually thought I had it on here, is the time management. So they will take so much longer to teach something than they think they're going to teach or they think something's going to take 45 minutes and it takes 10 minutes. And that's just experience because you know you learn the more you do it the more you can recognize this is going to take a lot longer or this is going to move a lot quicker. So that's where they could really use some guidance from the cooperating teachers when you're looking at their plans to say you know this is really going to take a lot longer than you think it's going to take. And, and with planning in the beginning we want you planning with them so that you can guide them and say and they could be taking the lead on it like I have these ideas but you might want to rein them in sometimes and say that's going to take about an hour and we only have 15 minutes so it's helpful for you to help them with the gauging of time and if it becomes a real problem because for some interns this is a real struggle if you would develop signals with them you know kind of like one of these things if they need to move a little quicker because sometimes they don't know how long to spend on each area because like I said it comes from experience classroom management is a struggle and that's a struggle for all new teachers so any tips that you have for them or and hints that you have for ways that they can improve on that. Differentiating instruction is something that 
you know, veteran teachers struggle with how do I do that. So uh, obviously for someone who's just starting, it's, it's challenging and difficult for them. So any ideas that you have, parent communication, the interns are scared to death of the parents and they try to avo avoid them at all costs. So any time that you can encourage them to interact with the parents and be a part of the conference when you have conferences with the parents, that will help them also feel more comfortable with that. And then at the conclusion of the internship, so well, the way we used to do it was to have them do observations in different areas and it's a minimum of three observations and I used to have them what they had, uh, I went to Florida State and at Florida State our last week we had to, we got to choose from a variety of choices but we had to go to different um, types of schools. So we had to go to a Montessori school, we had to go to an inner city school, we had to go to a rural school, we had to go um, to a magnet school. So we went to all of these different, and we even had to go to a private school. So we could see the wide spectrum as much as we possibly can. And I like to carry that over with the interns to say, don't, you've, you've seen one type of school possibly this semester, I want you to go look at something else, something that's different grade level, a different type of school, just so you can get a feel for, for that. Um, and again, it's nothing like 14 weeks that they've spent at your school, but it's just a little taste of what that looks like. And so um, we've always done it the last week of the internship, and I'll send detailed information about that as we go and get closer. But then at one cooperating teacher said, I think it would be better if they went to go observe somebody in the middle of the internship that has weakness or strengths where they have weaknesses. And I thought that was a fantastic idea. So within your school, if you feel like, you know, I've been trying to demonstrate how to do more um, high engagement and they're not really responding, but I know this great fifth grade teacher that they could go observe and they would be able to see that there. So if you want to insert observations at any point in the semester, I think that's a great idea. So um, we, I would definitely support that. And the recommend, they, they will often, bless you, ask you for recommendation letters. So I'm just kind of putting that on your radar now so that um, I try to tell the interns, remember to ask them a month in advance so that it gives them time. But just so you know, they, they may ask you to write them a letter of recommendation. And we will mail you a graduate course credit voucher for uh, to take a graduate course here at the University of Tampa as a thank you. Um, we wish that we could do more and provide you with money and gifts, but we're not allowed to do that. It's against Hillsborough County um, rules. So we can't give you any gifts or money, uh, but so we try to make up for it with a course graduate course credit voucher. And if you've already received your master's and you just would or want to take a course that maybe sounds interesting to you, then there's a way to do that as a non-degree seeking student too. So if you just want to use your one voucher. And then does anyone have any questions? I tried to go really fast because I know you sat here for a long time before I started. <laughs> does anyone have any questions? Yes. No. Oh, sorry. But um, so we were looking at the Danielson rubric yes. the other day, and the part of it was about um, planning. Yes. Um, it, oh, my question was that our team plans together. Okay. Um, am I, and I asked her, I said, how am I going to evaluate her on the planning of mm -hmm. the actual, if we're providing with her with everything, should she separate on those weeks and do something on her own that's different from what our team has come up with to so do. So is it one of those things, because we have two different situations that happen that we've seen. One is, here's the plans for next week, and you just teach off of them. And the other is where we sit and say, okay, we're gonna be teaching this topic on rocks, I have this great idea, and then they more collaborate, like other people contribute ideas. So I would say look for Noelle's contributions as the weeks go on, like is she bringing something to the table where she's saying, I have this great idea, or could we try it this way, and um, use that as evaluative. The other thing that I tell the interns, um, and hopefully, hopefully I'm not saying something that's being told to them differently at the schools, but that when a team plans together I think it's amazing and you can give a lot of input and I was fortunate enough when I taught that my team was planning before people really planned together but but we used to alter it a little to meet our students needs so I would walk out of the room with lesson plans that we wrote together but I knew that I needed to do something different for Brent because this wasn't going to work and I knew that I needed to do something different for this little group and so I would add the differentiation piece so that would be something I would hope that maybe okay. Noel could add those pieces so by incorporating that and then if you feel like you still haven't really seen enough if she can do that then you know if you want to have her do you know a certain subject one week without the team then then that's fine too. But the reality, hopefully, is that she will have a team when she's teaching to right. plan with. So it, it will be real life situation. Right. So yeah, and that is one of our school improvement goals this year is that right. we are required to do at least one subject together. Mm -hmm. So right. Yeah. 
Mark, our team already does it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Nicole.